Hello world and hello amazing Philippines. Good day. Today we're going to have another lesson and it's about of course module 3 of TTL1 and the title the title of this is about lesson 1 the digital non digital and of course digital skills and tools in delivering technology enhanced lessons. Okay, take a look at the first slide what you can see. Yeah, probably you can see of course uh, some of the non-digital, of course, uh, structural materials that we can have for our teaching and learning. Again, this is Sir A uh, would say good day to all. Okay, but before we start, uh, if you haven't, of course, subscribed in my YouTube channel, kindly, of course, uh, subscribe. You can also, of course, share this uh, video, lecture video, okay, for others to learn also. Okay. We have here, of course, our learning outcomes. And uh, the first is incorporated or incorporate media and technology in various content uh, areas. Okay, Des describe technology tools that are, of course, uh, uh, used in group activities. The third is use technology tools to collaborate and share resources among communities of practice. The fourth is, of course, reflected on the use of technology and its and on its relevance and, of course, appropriateness. Okay, there is, of course, no, um, a statement from Dr. Bilbao et al. in 2019 that says, teaching becomes, of course, rewarding when learners get the most uh, from instructions and manifested in their performance. So an important element in engaging, of course, the learners is when the strategy used in delivering the lessons uses an instructional material. So we credit here, of course, no, the uh, effectiveness of the delivery of instruction okay, through the use of, of course, of instructional materials or the IMs of teachers. Okay, let's first, of course, talk about the development and use of non-digital and conventional materials. So here you can see, of course, uh, the definition of instructional materials. Okay, and uh, when we say IMs, these are materials that are used to aid in the transmission of information from one to another. Okay, from, from of course, teachers, and uh, here comes the students or students to teachers. And these materials could include, of course, PPT or the PowerPoint presentation, such as uh, you use it as visual aids. Now, articles, books, and materials for project development. And of course, the term includes a book, a okay, supplementary materials for that matter, or a combination of a book, workbook, and supplementary materials. Then computer software, the magnetic media, no, the DVD, C CD, the ROM, and a computer courseware or online services or an electronic medium or other, of course, means of conveying information to the student or otherwise contributing to the learning process through electronic means, not including the open source instruction materials for that. Um, this is something that we can probably reflect on. Na, and it says no, that teachers need instructional materials to enhance teaching and learning. Instructional materials are, of course, defined as print and non-print items that are rested on the impact information to students in educational process. So examples of the instructional materials are the drawings that we have created, the kits, no, textbooks, posters, magazines, clip charts, newspapers, diorama, pictures, recording videos, and the like. So take a look with, of course, the um, aura of the t-shirt. So very fresh no? and very pretty. Okay, so at the end of, of course, the class, even at the end of the semester or probably school year, I would like that you will look like this one, this lady. No? Okay, it's very pretty. And of course, that's what I mentioned, uh, fresh. Okay, so let's have uh, the roles no, of instructional materials in teaching and learning, which okay, uh, which we can have. So the first is they promote, of course, meaningful communication and effective learning. Second is they ensure, of course, better retention, thus making, of course, learning more permanent. The third is they help to, to overcome the limited classroom by making, of course, inaccessible accessible. 
Okay, for example, no, there, there is, a, of course, uh, we are limited to see uh, even probably parts of the world, but of course, through IEMs that we can have, we can see, no, uh, some countries and even beautiful spots and places and etc. They provide number four, a common experience upon which late learning can be developed. And of course, number five, they encourage participation, especially if students are allowed to manipulate materials used. Okay. We have, of course, the examples of non-digital or conventional materials that we can have, not particularly in our teaching. So um, the first that we can have there is uh, this one, no? what we call these. Okay. But before that, let's first define the uh, instructional materials. So these are supplementary materials as what we've mentioned. Okay, which of course help the teacher to make his or her presentation. Number one, concrete. Second is effective. The third is interesting, meaningful, and aspiring. Again, okay, for our presentation should be concrete. The second is effective. The third is interesting, meaningful, and aspiring. So instructional materials are of course a great help in stimulating and facilitating the learning of the learners. Okay, it is already tested and proven to have it, no? Okay, let's have the first. You can see here, of course, the diorama. And uh, when I say, of course, diorama, these are small scenes created of layers of materials. Okay, all depicting, no? depicting um, a similar concept or theme. So they, they usually display a historical time per period or a nature scene okay, or a fictional situations. So that's it. Okay, of course, I believe that you have seen already you know, diorama since the elementary grade, okay, until, of course, you reach this level. The second one is, of course, uh, the nature table. So this is a table that contains, of course, objects and or scenes related to the current season or upcoming festival or a symbol, okay, when ecosystem. So that's it. Take a look with, of course, the nature table, no? very nice. Okay, the third one is, of course, the writing board. Okay, so it can, of course, display information written with chalk, supposing that it's chalkboard or blackboard. Okay, or special pens like the whiteboard that we can have. You know? And um, the most, of course, commonly used visual aid that we have. Okay, a good teacher will always, of course, uh, board uh, work, you know? uh, particularly in a math subject or even English, okay, where, of course, they can write sentences and many others. The fourth one, uh, we have actually some suggestions now in using the whiteboard, writing board, not whiteboard, writing board, rather. The first is keep the board clean, yeah. Okay, uh, of course, so we wanted to see that the board is clean so that, of course, the next teacher could write. Also, then, just next to use rather chalk or pens that um, contrast with uh, the background of the board so that, of course, students can see information clearly. So that's it. Okay. And uh, the third one is uh, make the text and drawing large, no? Drawings large enough to be seen from the back of the room. Supposing, okay, there are students on the back, they should uh, okay, probably see, no? The handwriting or probably your text, okay, or the drawings. Then number four, prepare complex drawings in advance. This is to save time, no? Effort and so on. So much better if, of course, you can prepare it uh, early, no? Earlier, okay, before probably the start of the class or a day ahead of uh, the scheduled class. Okay, then we have uh, number five is underlying headings and important are the unfamiliar words for embassies, no? I you have seen in my probably in my uh, lecture and activity that uh, I do um, write words no having force underline or italize the 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 unfamiliar word probably okay for students to uh, remember then do not talk while facing the board so I I have modeled this one already in the classroom that when you write probably you can have the side view no. Okay, then do not block the student's view so that, of course, uh, that the board no, uh, stand aside when writing or drawing is completed. So that's it, side by side, no? and facing, of course, the students. Then you need to allow students sufficient time 
for students to copy the information from the board. So that's it. Make, uh, of course, uh, uh, you should have time or you make time for students to write okay, what you have probably written on the board. Okay, so the, the fourth one is, of course, the flip chart. So it is a large tablet or pad of paper, usually on a tripod or stand. Okay, I believe that many of you or all of you probably have seen this one already, flip chart. Okay, for your teachers, no? In the basic ed, are you saying? We have suggestions on using flip chart, okay, or the flip chart, rather. Number one, use white tip uh, pens or markers. The second is print in black letters, no? that are large enough to be read easily from the back of the room. Take note. Then use, use different uh, colored pens to provide contrast, supposing. Okay, then use headings, no? boxes, cartoons, and borders to improve the appearance of the page. Then use bullets to delineate items on the page for easy re readability. Then leave plenty of white space and avoid putting too much information on one page. Okay, then when pages are prepared in advance, use every other page and have masking tape available to put pages up around the room during brainstorming and of course problem solving activities. And to hide a portion of the page, pull up the lower portion of the page and tape it. And when they, uh, when ready to reveal of course the information, remove the tape and let the page drop. And of course, uh, pace the student, not the flip chart well while talking. So that's the most important probably thing no, we can have. Okay. The, number, the, the fifth is, of course, the zigzag board. Okay. It is a multi, uh, it is a multi board series of three or four rectangular boards that we can have. No, they are joined together along the sides by hedges so that, of course, they can be easily folded up and, of course, carried. Okay, so you can see in the picture, uh, probably for some math uh, subjects, no, uh, or math teachers have this zigzag board also, which you can carry from one room to the other. Okay, number six is we have the wall display. It is a collection of many different types of items and materials put up on a wall to make it an interesting and of course informative display. So you can see this one, okay, wherein of course we can display in the wall. Actually in your room, no, supposing you have room, you can have colorful, no, display, wall display for that matter. Okay, then of course number seven is the rope and pull, pull, pull rather display board. So this consists, no, this board consists of two parallel horizontal poles tied loosely together with, of course, rope. And of course, visual aids such as posters can be pinned to the rope. So that's it, no? Okay, this is also very nice. You can also do this one in your room, supposing you own a room. Okay, so there are, of course, guidelines when designing conventional instructional materials. So the, the first tier is, of course, the unity. So what's with, of course, unity? So use only one idea for its visual aid and include, of course, a headline. The second one is simplicity. Huh? It make, of course, ideas and relationships simple and easy to recall. And avoid, of course, cluttering a visual okay, with too many words, numbers, or graphics. So not, of course, to confuse students. Then the third one is legibility. We need to make our letters big and readable for all okay, in the audience. Okay, and number four, we need to be consistent, no? Consistency. Okay, we need to use the same style, type style and, of course, art style for that matter. And, of course, we have clarity. That's uh, We need to have this one to avoid, of course, type that is too small to read, no? Supposing if we are considering text, no? And we need to avoid all caps. All caps, of course, denotes shouting. Okay, again, we have the following guidelines in designing conventional instructional materials. Number one is unity. The second one is simplicity. The third one is legibility. The fourth one is consistency. And the fifth is, of course, clarity. So that's it. Okay, we have also, no? Okay, uh, uh, the, the considerations for, for these. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, having these all, Okay, these five no guidelines can 
probably make us our instructional materials no very appealing okay very of course uh, uh good to of course the uh, the eyes of our students and uh, somehow okay they could uh, they could probably reflect that of course you as students now what soon to be teachers uh, have uh, done your best probably in creating of course your ims or instructional materials so this okay is the end of of course our lesson for module one no this is uh, of course sir a and here are of course the references regarding of course our lesson so I would uh, say thank you. And of course, don't forget to subscribe okay, in my YouTube channel so that you can be, of course, updated again of uh, the next lesson or probably some lessons related to okay, our course. Okay, Thank you so much for today. And uh, of course, wishing you good health. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye.